What a bitter blow it is to me that all my long struggle to win peace has failed. Yet I cannot believe that there is anything more or anything different that I could have done and that would have been more successful. Up to the very last, it would have been quite possible to have arranged a peaceful and honorable settlement between Germany and Poland. But Hitler would not have it. He had evidently made up his mind to attack Poland whatever happened. And although he now says he put forward reasonable proposals which were rejected by the Poles, that is not a true statement. The proposals were never shown to the Poles, nor to us, and though they were announced in the German broadcast on Thursday night, Hitler did not wait to hear comments on them, but ordered his troops to cross the Polish frontier the next morning. I am speaking to you in the cabinet room at 10 Downing Street. This morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note, stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock, that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. Ich bin stolz darauf, dass Sie alle Zentrum und SPD, KPD, Mittelparteien, Wirtschaftsparteien, Bauerparteien, Handwerkerparteien, Parteien der Mieter und der Hausbesitzer, Anwertungsparteien und so weiter. Ich bin stolz darauf, dass Sie alle... In this grave, our head the most faithful in our history, I send this message, spoken with the same depth of feeling for each one of you, as if I were able to cross your threshold and speak to you myself. For the second time in the lives of most of us, we are at war. Stand by for this announcement at the end of this bulletin. These are today's main events. Germany has invaded Poland and has bombed many towns. General mobilization has been ordered in Britain and France. Parliament was summoned for six o'clock this evening. Orders completing the mobilization of the Navy, Army and Air Force were signed by the King at a meeting this afternoon of the Privy Council. I was operating from an airfield in uh, Suffolk um, at, call, at, at Honington and we took off on a, a mission to inner Wellington to um, bomb the uh, marshalling yards at Dewsburg. I was a second pilot uh, uh, of a Wellington and uh, my pilot was a squadron leader, my, my uh, flight commander, and we had, all, had a tear all together crew of six. Uh, we were shot down over the Dutch coast uh, on the 5th of June 1940 at about 11 o'clock. We were caught in a searchlight cone and then the firework started, the um, heavy flak batteries. Port engine caught fire, the pilot ordered us to bail out. I landed, uh, he didn't have time to get out, the, the aeroplane blew up. The rest of us got out except for the navigator whose chute went down in flames. Well, I was into caught and uh, taken to um, the transit camp at Dulag Luft. 
from there up to Bart, uh, to, to Stelagroff 1. I spent about 21 months there, I had various escape attempts, and uh, then uh, from there we were transferred to St Stelagroff 3 in Zagen. I went to uh, Offneck 21B in Poland uh, for about uh, the, the winter of 19. Uh, 43 to 44, no, sorry, 42 to 43, and uh, then back to Sargon uh, to the, what they call the North Compound that had been newly built, and um, I uh, joined the escape organization uh, where they uh, had planned three uh, big tunnels, Tom, Dick and Harry, which went down to um, a depth of 30 feet, planned to go 365 50 feet into the woods. <clears throat> there were about 600 working on the organization. It was um, uh, uh, run by um, a very uh, charismatic South African squad leader, pre-war barrister called Roger Bushell. The tunnels were gradually pushed out, but Tom, Tom was found in the uh, summer of uh, uh, 1943, um, duty blown up, uh, and uh, then we, we stopped work for about three, three months till January 1944, uh, uh, when uh, work was started again on, on Harry, which has been uh, pushed forward for about 100 feet previously. All resources were concentrated on Harry. It took about two, two months to finish. I was working on the dispersal of the earth, uh, the, the sand, and it was finished about the beginning of March 1944. We were then in a rather a, a dilemma because it was a very cold winter, the coldest winter for maybe 30 years. And on the other hand, we had the, the security problem. In fact, it, was virtual certainty of a lot of people being caught because it was too darn cold. However, Wings Day said, well, it's an operational war. We've got to create as much trouble for the Germans as possible. Uh, and uh, so we broke it on the 24th of March, 1944. The re result, I think, is, uh, everybody knows from the, the film, which has been shown a number of times, um, 76 got out. Hitler ordered the door be shot, but Himmler um, said, well, if you do that, you're going to shoot uh, our men at home, and, uh, uh, when our, our prisoners in, in England. Uh, anyway, it looks too much like murder. He said, well, all right, well, 50 to be shot. I was, in fact, caught on the Czech border, taken to um, Bar Gestapo headquarters, and then on to Sachsenhausen here. Uh, about April 44. I was put in the Sonderlager where I met Wings Day um, and uh, a man called Dodge uh, Major, who's um, a relative of Churchill, uh, another flight lieutenant from um, Sargon. Besides that, there were about another 15, 40, 15 people, 20 of us all together, including um, five Russians and two Russian generals. Uh, two Poles who were dropping supplies to the resistance in France, RAF Poles, uh, four Irish soldiers, Peter Churchill and married to a debt. <coughs> and uh, so that was the population of the Zonderlag, a very small camp, two, uh, two, two wooden huts, surrounded by barbed wire, all usual thing, guards, dogs. And they said, well, you can't escape from here. That was the reason they put us there, one reason. So we looked around and decided we might be able to do it. I remember they used to take us into um, uh, the, uh, the main part of the camp here, march us around, around the camp uh, and into the uh, Appel Platz, uh, where they had the boot testing area. Uh, and, uh, um, among others, there was a, a British commander unit marching around, uh, where well, they did march around for about 450 days in Operation Checkmate, led by a young naval lieutenant called Godwin. Uh, they, they were eventually all shot in February. 
But in the meantime, we were able to have a look around, and um, we saw they were building another compound there, so we thought we ought to um, get on with it. So we started a tunnel. The thing with the tunnel is that two, two things, security and dispersal. Well, we took care of the security by not telling anyone except the British officers. There were five, I think six of us at that time. Six, we were joined by a colonel, commander colonel, caught on the Asiatic, Jack Treshaw, uh, who um, helped us. And, uh, it, well, the tunnel was going by then. We'd um, got the, um, loosened the floorboard and um, dug down and uh, found there was only a very small clearance. Uh, uh, underneath the hut. Uh, so we had to dig trenches for about uh, three months. Uh, to, to, it took us about three months to dig trenches deep enough to take the earth from the tunnel. We then started the tunnel. Uh, only one could go down at a time. Uh, it, it went out to about 100 feet. Uh, finally we finished it and um, Five of us got out, went on the S-Bahn down to Berlin. They uh, have been given an address in Berlin, South Berlin, where uh, uh, they thought there would be a man who would help them. <coughs> but the place had been bombed, so uh, they were just cleaning themselves up, ready to uh, go somewhere else when the, the police arrived. They were brought back here. A Dodge went up north on his own. I think he hit up in a pigsty. He was hidden by a farmer uh, for about a month and eventually given away by somebody. Uh, and they were brought back here. Jack Churchill and I uh, went, um, went together. Uh, we um, uh, hiked up the Berlin Rostock railway line, jumped a goods train, uh, a freight train. Um, not far from here, just north of uh, up here, Dunnenwald, uh, and travelled on that for about 50 kilometres to Neustrelitz, and we got off uh, uh, there, and um, went on up the line, the line eventually caught near Gustrov. We were brought back to Sachsenhausen, uh, and in the meantime, Himmler, Himmler had ordered our execution, um, but um, luckily, also the execution of the commandant, uh, the architect who designed the camp, security officer, and the guard on the gate uh, at the time when we, when we escaped. Um, well, um, luckily for us, all that was commuted. And for what reason, I don't know, but uh, the Germans were unpredictable, particularly the SS. We um, were committed to solitary confinement and that was the time I was brought into this cell and uh, I started um, I do we didn't know how long we were going to be here and that was it just silence um, and uh, you had to pass the time as you could uh, I devised, devised a routine actually by, by um, uh, you were working up about five in the morning you had to empty your box and take it up to the ablutions come back, this SS men scream at you and throw a broom at you and they sweep his hell out. And um, then uh, the breakfast was brought around, well, there's our coffee. Uh, and um, usually had a bit of black bread over from the night before. Uh, so how to pass the time? Well, I had meditation, I had a spirit of meditation. You find things came back to you very clearly in those, under those circumstances. Um, you know, I walk around the cell, uh, well, you know, go, go one way and then make a change, go the other way. Right hand circuit, left hand circuit. Um, and then uh, time to get up and watch. There's a, a barred window a few feet up, uh, quite, a, quite a way up. You couldn't look out unless you got in the bed. So I got in the bed and looked out and watched the uh, people exercising around there. And then the lunch came round. That was uh, sauerkraut soup and um, whatever. If the um, guard saw you, he'd uh, uh, had a peephole. He'd tell you to get up. Auf stay, auf stay. By then, I uh, played chess with myself. I had a check counterpane. I made it all um, 
little um, uh, uh, chest made out of uh, silver paper, then, uh, well, uh, it was, I uh, maybe had a little walk around the cell and then I felt I'd had a, had a full day. Uh, that went on for about five months. The Dodger had gone off on a secret mission uh, back to Berlin uh, for, for, uh, for the SS. So he, he related to Churchill, they thought he'd go back and stop the war so they could fight the Russians. Anyway, um, we were let out back to the Zonderlager and um, then um, the decade from there down through Flossenburg, um, which was a terrible place, they uh, died at the rate of 50 a day there or they worked to death. Oh yes, then they saw, um, the Commandant wanted to shoot us as soon as we got there but they said we had two German um, uh, guards with us who would, uh, one was an SD man who had quite a lot of influence and uh, they said well if you shoot these people they're going to, uh, questions will be asked in Berlin and uh, because they're being used as maybe bargaining chips for the, um, the Allies. So um, anyway we were put in the hospital and we saw three stretchers going past the window one day covered with uh, blanket, bodies covered with blood and brains. And one was Pastor Bonhoeffer, uh, Admiral Canaris was head of intelligence and uh, his, um, he had been in the resistance and his um, adjutant gen general um, Van Osten, right. And um, so there was room at the end for us as it, it already shot 13 agents at the time. We went down to, to the cells and into the cell block. We were then taken to Dachau, so at Dachau we were down to Innsbruck, uh, where we were uh, met a lot of prominent and main political prisoners in Germany. We were taken over the Brenner Pass <coughs> in buses down to Villa Bassa, uh, and there uh, we, um, uh, the, the, the situation got a bit fluid. Uh, uh, they contacted General Garibaldi uh, in the uh, signalman, signalman's hut where the buses broke down and uh, he invited Wings and, and, and Jack Churchill to, um, <coughs> for a, a parley and they said, well, let's get together and uh, uh, shoot, uh, attack these SS people. But, uh, Wings was usually uh, game for a, a fight and uh, he said well uh, <clears throat> you know we've got a lot of women and children with us who were relatives of the 20th of July plot people who were killed and let's wait till we get the SS in a better position and um, which in fact what happened well, we, uh, we had all kinds of people with us German generals and uh, um, Schacht and um, Pastor Niemöller, bishops, princes and potentates of all sorts. All the main political prisoners in Germany. Eventually, the, um, uh, a German colonel who had re retreated Warsaw uh, got in touch with the prisoner, uh, got, got on the phone, got in touch with a, a German general who uh, he knew quite well, and asked him if he'd send up a platoon of Wehrmacht to kick out these SS fighters, and uh, that is in fact what happened. And um, that was the first liberation. We were finally liberated by the Americans um, from Italy. And uh, they arrived, and we were certainly glad, glad to see them. 4th of May 1945. So that was the end of the war for us.